this is the Dual Terra prototype. It's still my favourite prototype that I've ever built for Orange, pretty much. I played my 50th birthday party on this. It was a very messy night, indeed. Uh, I'm Aid Emsley, Orange Amps. This is number five, Denmark Street. This is our current workshop here. <laughs>《2007 this prototype was built. Essentially, it was a different take on the on the uh, on the Tiny Terror. Yeah, we ran a survey in in the USA with dealers, and the question was, do you want a Tiny Terror combo or do you want a dual channel Tiny Terror? And they all said they wanted the Tiny Terror combo. But we did both. No one really bought the Tiny Terror Combo, or that, that, that didn't sell as well as this. This thing flew out. Tiny Terror Combo kind of defeated the object. Tiny Terror, the whole point of it was it was a small lamp in a gig bag that you could throw over your shoulder, get on the tube. Right, I'm going to do a gig and I'm going to drink, you know, because there's a party afterwards. So that's, that's what that, the Tiny Terror was for. is a point-to-point -point prototype. Obviously, I knew the final thing was going to be a Terra, but we hadn't generated any of the transformers, so this is an 8030 mains transformer. It's a Rockover 50 output transformer. It's a Choke 61. It's got a tube rectifier. And four L84s running cathode bias. It's got two phase inverters and two preamps, two channels. So you've got a tiny Terra channel, this is voiced exactly like the Tiny Terror, but driving this output stage. And this actually came out saying the fat channel on the final model. This says warmer channel on this because it was the prototype. And this is different. It doesn't have the bright cap. It has a cathode follower in it, you know, so it's got a slightly, a slightly fatter uh, tone uh, that's better it's more pedal friendly than this channel because this channel has a 100 PF bright cap on the gain. So this is better for cleaner stuff and this is better for pedals. They'll both get some serious hair if you push them in there. If you get these above halfway, uh, you'll be very, very loud. You'll be in the power ramp. Uh, anything over here, about two o'clock, you're gonna be tearing into these EL84s, you know. Uh, <clears throat> all the distortion is really going to be them above those levels, you know, uh, which is how I like to use them. You know. Yeah, so I kind of built this prototype. It's kind of like an exotic British thing because that was the parts I had lying around. On the back, we've got a boot for the foot switch, uh, and that's the channel switch if you want to do it manually. There's an A and a 16. Uh, inside, we are completely point to point, and you can see, obviously, I've dead bugs the relays there for the switching. It was designed on this chassis because I had this chassis, which was a custom, it's a custom shop chassis actually, and that was when it was built, the 19th of December, 2007. <laughs> Sort of lower gain levels, higher volume levels, you just into the EL84s, there's no preamp distortion going on at all. Then. And you get that's how you get that, and, you know, especially with a tube rectifier, which didn't end up in the original because we couldn't fit it in, there wasn't enough space to make a terror with the tube rectifier. We were trying to get the size down, we were trying to get it as small as we could, because it was like a double tiny terror, really. You know, but it's still a popular model and a lot of artists like this amp, so uh, I have this in this workshop. I think this is one of the only prototypes I've got here because it's my fave. You know, I just like what this amp does, especially when it's when it's cramped. You know, when it's in the when it's in the danger zone, that's when I love it. It's just threadbare. It just tears people's heads off. I love it. Absolute, absolute bliss. It's, it's just indecent.